So welcome back to the Manx Grand Prix. It is Monday morning and it's wet outside. And the forecast is for quite a lot of wet today, but we still need to have the bikes ready for practice tonight, just in case it does dry up. Or of course, then they're ready for tomorrow. And if they're ready today, we have a day out tomorrow. So one of my little tasks on the 750 was to uh, sort out the throttle slack. So we've done a couple of little mods and cable tied the cable into place a bit better so it can't pop out like it managed to yesterday. So that's the throttle slack sorted, but the throttle connection was a bit fluffy. A bit, it, you'd sort of crack it open, it'd be, uh, and then come on. And I think it was a little bit rich because I tend to jet on the safe side. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm adjusting the height of the needle so, if Adam steps this way, the needle sits in the top of the carb, down there, and then when I open the throttle, it raises the slide up with the needle in it, and that pulls the needle, it pulls the needle out of the hole in the main jet and lets more fuel in. So if I lower the needle a click on the uh, rungs, it basically leans it off ever so slightly on the needle on like the mid-range and when you're opening the throttle so I'm just it's only a tiny little change but I'm just hoping it will clean the throttle connection up a little bit so I've done those two I've got this one to do that one to do relatively short job uh, then I'm going to adjust a little bit of preload off the rear shock so it just goes over some of the bumps a little bit better bit of a check round and clean on this bike and the ZXR will be job done strange enough our awnings becoming quite popular because it's waterproof <laughs> Right, so the TZ had a very distinct misfire yesterday, which might be as simple as a spark plug, because it is an old two-stroke and spark plugs are what they eat. But Chris, who owns it, did send me a message to check uh, the water passages in the base gasket were fairly clear as well, because he has had issues with that before. So we've pulled the cylinder off, and I mean, these things are easy to really easy to work on. It is exhaust pipe off, which is sprung on in one bolt, and then literally four nuts and you can take the cylinder off. These things are brilliant because they're designed to be taken apart all the time. Uh, the piston is obviously quite oily. Um, the cylinder is quite oily because it wasn't running properly. Um, and so what we're doing, just gonna do is clean all this up round here uh, and reseal it. But the actual base gasket and the water passages look okay. So we're gonna put this back together, put a fresh spark plug in it. And when it stops raining outside, we're gonna run it down to the dyno out the back of the paddock and see if it's fixed and if it's not we'll try a coil and some other stuff after changing half the electrics on the bike and two tips of the dyno it turns out what we need to do is tighten an earth up on the frame which was a little bit embarrassing but at least now the tz runs lovely Uh, it's Tuesday afternoon and we've had a relatively leisurely day because we did all the bike prep yesterday while it was raining. I say leisurely-ish. Uh, me and Eric took Eric's BM up to Derby and I rode around in circles for a bit. It was really quite nice. I basically had a trap to myself. It was pretty cool. Well, that's uh, bike number one through screw engineering for the evening. So we shall push it to our location on the uh, back fence of the Alden area. Well, Adam will. I'm not doing very much at all, but luckily it's downhill from here. I did make him push it up the hill to scrutineering on his own because by the time I'd finished socialising around the paddock, it was too late. But at least he looked like he was enjoying himself and he loves a bit of exercise. Plus, you sent us up and they were doing number order first. Yeah, so but they didn't, the other they, they didn't do that the other night, so I, I wasn't to know. So, it was all right. It was only 20 minutes holding it up on a hill. Thank you. Uh, no, no problem. You don't, you don't really have to thank me. So I gave Adam a little bit of jib, and now I've had to bring my own bike to uh, scrutineering. So I'm here with the 250. I will admit, at least I've got the light wipe, and I've just had the man down to turn on my GPS tracker. So there's an antenna on the seat unit and a massive box um, down here. And when I asked about it, I was told, like, that's why they were so big, because the idea is that in the next couple of years, or even next year, that every bike that goes around the mountain course will have this GPS stuff on them. They want every bike on the course to have this, but it's actually had to be developed by the government here, the organisation, whatever, because they don't have anything else on the market that can track the speeds that we do around here 
and the number of vehicles we'll have on track. And apparently this has um, accelerometers in it and gyros and all sorts. So if the bike, say, for example, high sides you, they know about it because in the air med out before it's even been radioed through. And it has lots of other interesting tech. But at the moment, it is quite big. All right, they're in. Uh, we have a space here for some newcomer stuff uh, when their session for scrutineering opens. And what I need to do now is go make a drink, do some sitting down, get me eye in, and try not to fall asleep. We, we do, of course, have to do like pre practice, like nutritional um, things. So th this is, of course, um, high energy, protein rich isotonic ice cream. Does that sound right? Yep. And because it's Davison's, it is the best ice cream in the world. So now Rick's had like a day to recover from his first mountain course experience. And we've been for a lap in the car today. What's your thoughts, Rick? Uh, not quite as nervous as before. Uh, still a little, a little reserved, but uh, I, I know that I have a lot to work on and I will be watching my video before we go out. Along, uh, I might join you for that. Along actually. with notes from Dave this morning. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll give it a go and see how it goes. Hopefully a little quicker than last night. Uh, you're looking forward to getting back out tonight? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, the nerves are gone. So we got them all out in that first lap and now it's just fun. So steady away and uh, just keep chipping at it and I think we're going to be right. So not going to win anything so might as well just have fun and chip away at it. So I shall finish doing my silly stretches because I am not flexible and I need to do yoga and then I'll put Elmer on and go ride around the best bit of tarmac in the world on my mobile. Martin's over there he is actually reasonably calm and he has had lunch today and is doing better than the other day when he wasn't feeling great on the bike um, so he's all set for his session He's got a bit of time to wait yet, and hates it when I stick a camera in his face, which is why I'm not bothering today, because I suppose it's probably better if he focuses on what he's supposed to be doing. Right, you might notice I'm not at the grandstand. Uh, I'm at Parliament Square um, with the 250 uh, that Adam's come to collect. So the good news is it made it half a lap today, which is the furthest I've been on a 250 in about five years. So we are making progress. If we carry on with this level of progress, by next year we might even make the finish line. So a little bit depressing, but not too bad. And I managed to break down where there was catering again. So uh, I went to the chippy behind me. I've had a lovely filling dinner, which is kind of useful because it might be a late night getting bikes prepped. Brilliant. Well, I've made it back to the uh, paddock and these guys, are, they're eating late. I mean, who, who doesn't stop during their session to eat their dinner? Uh, Rick's done uh, a bit faster tonight. They, they only got one flying lap. Uh, well, standing start lap. So Rick's done, what, 23 minutes 16? 23.16. Which is in qualified speed, so he's happy. What did you do? Through the speed trap at Sulby. Over 130. Excellent. <laughs> we, we discussed that in detail earlier and it's, yeah, you've got to be pinned through the kink at the end of Sulby. So uh, yeah, excellent progress. And out of the seat too. That works. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it would be quicker, but the sunlight in your eyes is bad, yeah? Oh, uh, the sunlight was horrible. Uh, coming up before Ballygarry, Ballygarry, Gorsley. You can't see it. Horrible. Yeah. You can't see anything. I, yeah. I definitely, I knew there'd be sun, but I didn't think I'd be completely blind. <laughs> so I saw the majestic French leathers going through Parliament Square. Yeah. Did, did you enjoy that? Yeah, I didn't even mess up Parliament Square. I just I went slowly through it, but I didn't mess it up this time, so that cool. was good. Um, Progress? You don't know my time, do you? I don't know. 23 minutes, 30.25. Right, so you've got to find a quarter of a second to be qualified. <laughs> <laughs> After all of that distance, how is it quarter of a but, but to be fair, it, it was standing start. And I tiptoed, I, Hillbury was not enjoyable. I overshot signposts and then I tiptoed through the neck. Because they were all damp and there was sunlight. So and was, excellent. Yeah. We have so a lot there's, of excuses. There's 10 seconds. Easy. Yeah, easy. Yeah. So, yeah. Excellent. The 0.25 really hurts. <laughs> that could have been a qualifying lap, but no, it's. It's alright, the weather will be nice tomorrow. All that distance.
quarter of a second. But 101.9 mile an hour? Apparently so, yeah. With, From a standing with, start. With a lot of traffic through the uh, technical section of Glen Ellen. It really, like, I lost a lot of time through there. So, but I know where I'm going. I feel comfortable where I'm going, so I've got plenty of time tomorrow. What's happened, Adam? What's happened? You look very excitable. Quick, quick! He's smiling! On camera! Oh my god, this is a first. <laughs> there must be some good tin. Then we can ignore the motorbikes, there must be some good tinder tonight. Oh. <laughs> Either way, first time we've nice. ever seen him smile. <laughs> it is. Woohoo! <laughs> I didn't know he had teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so, down this end, I've got half a lap on the 750 before we got uh, red flagged earlier. Uh, bike feels good. Uh, having ridden Martin, um, uh, Eric's bike up at Jerby this morning with electronic throttle, which is like on your fingertips, this is a man's throttle. So um, that took a little bit of getting back used to. But no, bike is good. We're just going to try some slightly long gearing and basically put petrol in it and go and ride it again tomorrow. So the only real work is to fix the TZ as normal. What day is it? Tuesday. It's not, is it? It's Wednesday. Okay, it's Wednesday. Right, it's Wednesday. That didn't take any deciding at all. Um, we're back in the garage. The floor is very wet outside, which means we're on the Isle of Man. Um, Adam is just doing the finishing touches to the 750, just cleaning wheels, giving it a check round, probably might be lubing the chain. Doesn't need too much doing to it. Uh, I changed the gearing last night before we went home. I'm going to crack on with the 250 and see how bad the destruction is. See if we can actually fix it or not. So we're starting the tear down on the uh, 250. Got the radiator off it, dumped the water out of it, and there wasn't as much water in it when we drained it as there was when we filled it. So the water's gone somewhere, and I'm guessing some of it's probably disappeared at the exhaust pipe or somewhere. So that's not a good sign and may explain why it's got a little bit toasty. Uh, it didn't help that the temperature gauge doesn't work um, or maybe it did work and it was 150 degrees in there. Either way, it's not very happy. So we're just starting to strip down. I'm going to pull the back cylinder off it, take it off complete, see what the piston's like and see what the damage is like and then we can assess whether we can actually fix it or not. We have some bits but we don't necessarily have all the bits. Adam is holding the rear cylinder off the TZ and from the outside all appears relatively well apart from it looks like these bolts have got surprisingly warm and it turns out that's because they did get a bit too warm. That is uh, a load of aluminium from a slightly melted piston so that's why it stopped. Um, I'm actually surprised look at the amount of water that didn't come out of it how far it actually went um, and it's not the most disastrous thing I've ever done to a 250, but it's clearly not very good. Now, if we do go down here, though, we pull the head off the other cylinder. So looking at the burn pattern on this, and it actually doesn't look too bad at all. So I think this cylinder has been at reasonable temperature. Uh, but when we took this cylinder off, um, this is one of the cylinder head O-rings and basically sits sort of round there-ish and keeps the water out of the combustion chamber. And it looks like that's... I've probably got nipped at some point or it's just got a bit too much combustion pressure behind it if the bolts have sort of backed off or something uh, and that's probably where the water's been blowing through or sucking through so that's I suspect the cause of the overheating and the consequence of the overheating is a dead cylinder which is a bit of a shame because it was going really well for the half a lap it went as much as I think the project or the 250 might be doomed and I know really I shouldn't bury too much time into it but we've bought it and there's not that many 250s on the grid so it would be nice if we can to fix it so we'll see we'll go and try some of the more knowledgeable people in the paddock have mentioned that this will clean up the usual technique was battery acid and some emery paper but we don't have a lot of battery acid used running lithium batteries on over there anymore. Uh, so what Adam's doing is the other trick is very fine emery paper and um, a little bit of petrol to, to wet it. And it um, is actually definitely improving. Well, we won't give up just see. yet. No. Onwards, my friend. Onwards. 
Eric is tinkering around doing maintenance on Rick's bike. We've just got the fairing off my Super Twin to have a little bit of a look around that. Um, nothing major, just basically just having a little check around it really, as we always do. Uh, Martin's lap last night at uh, just under 102 mile an hour from a standing start is excellent and 145 point something mile an hour through the speed trap is basically the same as I did at TT. So that means he is at least holding the throttle open down the important bits. I feel that Stuart might be taking this whole relaxing before a session a little bit seriously. Um, but then again he is French and the French do like to have a lie down after lunch. Oh, it's noisy down here! All these old classic bikes are on silent and they sound mega! Go, go, go! Rick and Stewie set off together. Here we go, here's Martin. I've run away and put my leathers on. I'm now waiting for uh, Rick and Stuart to reappear. And the reason I'm not waiting for Martin is because he's down Sulby Strait with a low pressure warning on the dashboard. So he's done the engine in the Aprilia. Um, that was awesome! <laughs> nope, Stu's in as well. I'm getting in the way now. Yeah, yeah, I've just been told it was over 100, so. Awesome. Pretty damn happy with that. Still a lot of room to go. Just step by step, bump it up and call it good. Most importantly, most importantly, are you enjoying it? Oh, there's nothing better with your pants on. <laughs> First time down Bray Hill, flat out. I rolled a little bit, it wasn't flat out. I'm a weedy, I'm scared. <laughs> I backed out a little bit, but it was incredible. Wow! Oh, unbelievable. All right. So I got a third lap in, which was great fun, because it's the best racetrack in the world. Uh, and I really like my ZXR 750. Um, and I missed getting a fourth lap in by about nine or 10 seconds and put the checker flag out. So we weren't, we didn't rush particularly on the sort of turnaround. So yeah, I have that thing now where I don't need to do more laps, but I like doing laps. And there is a load of work I could be doing in the awning, but as Eric rightfully pointed out, this is the best racetrack in the world. I need more laps. So tonight, we're going to put more petrol in the bike. We're going to do more laps, because we can. And this bike is excellent. Um, so we've got two and a half hours before the evening session. The bike is just sat here in the holding area. On warmers, we'll give it a bit of a look round in a bit. Put some more petrol in it. That's about it, really. But I suppose, really, I ought to wander back to the awning, eat something, and see what chaos has been left for me. Jess has reappeared with Martin and the twin um, and realistically, other than breaking the motorbike, Martin's actually quite cheerful because he did 104 point something mile an hour on his flying lap, so he is going fast, we just need to make the motorbike work again. Uh, apparently he got to Sulby Strait, looked down at the dashboard and there was a big warning flashing across it, low oil pressure, so he pulled the clutch in and, um, and it stopped itself. So. He got to the end of Sulby Strait, um, and then when he was there, Mikey Evans actually managed to fall off in front of him, so he ran over and helped him uh, pick himself up off the floor in a field. Uh, so he's been, you know, helping load people into air ambulances and all sorts while he's been up there, so he has been at least useful for the afternoon. He was also very enthusiastic that, uh, that he'd done uh, the top and bottom of Bray Hill flat out, and apparently that now makes him a real man by the sound of it. So we've dropped the oil out of it and the sump plug has a little spiky little haircut to it, which is sometimes it's just little bits of gearbox and clutch and whatever, uh, but this is a little bit more and there's some slightly goldy bits down here and the goldy bits will be brass from the bearings for the crank or possibly sort of balance shaft or whatever, but normally crank. So between that and the fact that in the oil there is a distinct sort of sheen of gold if we were somewhere in australia panning for gold we'd be very happy but we're on the island man and there is no gold in that there pot so tonight we will be taking the engine out of this 
and putting another one in. Bray Hill, flat out, ish, ish. I think there was a couple of rolls, but mm, basically flat out. Did it look flat out, Robert? I heard one roll. He heard one roll. <laughs> and that's, and considering I've just blown the engine of his bike, he can tell me that, that's all right. So one of your friends sent you a text that said, is it scary? <laughs> yeah, my reply was, um, first few laps it's scary, and then you string it together and it, it's easier, and then it becomes faster, and then it becomes more scary. Excellent. Well, at least you're actually smiling. Uh, the bike will be uh, out again. We are going to sort that out. It's just uh, a little bit busy, but I'm going to go in the back of the van, put my leathers on, and uh, chill for a few minutes. And that's it. Get myself back down Brayhill. So just had a little bit of chaos uh, because we were warming everything up and then realised that the battery charger uh, wasn't playing ball and we were down to 14% battery, which probably isn't really good enough for two laps around here because of total loss. Um, so we ran off and uh, fixed that. Adam ran all the way down to the bottom, found the other battery charger, and by the time we got up, the first one had started working again. So then we realised, because we'd had the seating off and put it back on, that the rain light wasn't working. So Adam ran back down to get the one with the 250. By the time he got back, we'd fixed it. So Adam's had a workout. He looks very happy about it. Uh, right. And if I go in about four or five minutes' time, I'll still get two laps and might not get too much traffic. Only one way to find out. Chill for two minutes, put me on my off, go right around. It turns out that charging your battery for 15 minutes before you go out on track isn't enough battery. Um, well, it's enough for a lap and a quarter. Uh, so it's been a fairly long evening. Uh, the positives... Handlead is an awesome place to watch uh, TT races going past. Maximum pre races, TT, same thing. Uh, yeah, awesome place to watch. Um, and Ruth, who lives at Handley's Cottage, is very generous, and I now have custard donuts. So the catering for this week is still going quite well at retirement points. Uh, the bad side is you can't get to until the roads are open, so it is uh, quarter to ten. We've only just really got the bike back and put it back on charge. 250 is basically back together. It just really wants some water putting in it. So it's going all right. Um, is it? Actually, I'm not sure it is going all right. 750 just needs a battery charging. And the jetting changing. And a rear tyre putting in it. And the rain light fixing. And the battery charging. 250 just needs water in it. Uh, but the, um, the, the twin... The twin needs an engine in it, so... That's going to be quite a long job tomorrow. Which means I need to get my bike done tonight. And I'm already quite tired. Quite hungry. It's getting a bit cold. So I'm just in bed. And it is getting late. And I really ought to go to bed. But brain's going 100 miles an hour still. Um, what's going on today? Really good effort from all our newbies. Uh, they're all over 100 miles an hour. Martin did 104 points. Something from a standing start. Uh, and speed track faster than I did at TT. So... At that point, the bike was working well, and he's just on it. You can tell he's done his own work. Mega proud of him. Doing really well. Uh, I was out on the big bike, riding. I love that bike. It's just cool. Um, and you get to ride around the Isle of Man, which is freedom personified. It is brilliant. We're utterly privileged to be allowed to do it. It's just, well, just brilliant. Um <laughs> I was having a bit of fun as well. I was behind uh, Frankie Senna, who's a newcomer for a little bit. Managed to get past him. He come past me on the mountain. I passed him again. Um, nice to sort of tow around. He looked really safe. He looked like he'd been riding here for ages. Uh, he did throw a stone out to me, though. So I have a bit of a bruise on my arm. Strange day. Slightly brain frazzled. But the point when you're on the bike, going fast with the road to yourself, and because I set off late for the last session, I had the road to myself. I didn't see another bike in 45 miles, which is brilliant. It was literally me, the setting sun, best tarmac in the world. An utter privilege. So that was cool. Everything else is just <laughs> hard work. <laughs> but never mind. Right, I'm going to set my alarm, get my head down, get nowhere near enough sleep. Come on tomorrow.
Thanks for watching and join us again soon for some more Manx Grand Prix action.